Now we will look at basic combinational circuits. So we will have our circuit and from this circuit representation we will find the boolean expression. From boolean expression we can go to our circuit representation. We might also represent the same thing same functionality with a truth table and from truth table we can go to boolean expression and from boolean expression we can find out our truth table similarly from our circuit we can make our truth table and from truth table we can find out our circuit representation so circuit representation boolean expression representation and truth table express the same thing for us and then we will try to convert each representation to another one Let's say basically we have seen this. Let's say I have a function f, x and y or z. So this is my boolean expression and from this boolean expression I can go to circuit representation. This is y, z. Let's say this is z naught and I will have a naught operator here or gate here and end operator here. So from this circuit representation I can go to my truth table in this case i have my inputs here and my output here so i can write all possible inputs and for this all possible inputs i need to find out my output so let's find my f output based on this input so from this boolean equation or from the schematic i see when the x is zero then f is directly zero right so in this portion where the x is zero then f should be zero so for all these four input sections my output is zero and let's look at the remaining one where this is x is one so if x is one then f is y or z naught right so this is for x is one so now let's look at this if y is 0 then f is equal to z naught right so these two where y is 0 then my f is inverse of z so i will be putting 1 here and 0 here and similarly i can take this and if y is 1 i can say f is 1 so here for the remaining case so this is x1 and y1 my output f is always 1 here so from this boolean expression or a schematic i can find out my truth table so this is easy let's try to find how we can go from truth table to boolean expression so let's do a simple example directly and then see how we can do this operation so given a simple truth table i have two variables x and y so these are all possible inputs and as an example i will say my output f is zero here one here one here and zero here so given this truth table what is the functionality of f so we will try to find the boolean expression for the f so the way to find out boolean function so we will first look at the conditions where the output is one so in two lines my f is one so this is the first line and this is the second line so and for us where the f is one we will try to find the boolean expression right so let's look at this line first so this line tells me if x is zero and y is one my f is one right so and then this tells me if x is 1 and y is 0 f is 1 so then i can say i can represent this by x if x is 0 i need to have x not here and y so this is one condition if this is true my function is 1 for this other case x is 1 i will say x and y not then if this is true f is also 1 so in total I, what i can write f is one if x not and y or this was one condition and the second condition x and y not okay so this is the f function for this truth table let's see 
if this is correct let's put so the first line is x and y 0 0 and f should be 0 right let's put 0 here for x is 0 then x naught is 1 so this is 1 and 0 or 0 and 1 right so if you do this operation you will get 0 so my output is 0 here so let's try the other case if x is 0 y is 1 so if x is 0 y is 1 let's do it with another color so in this case i have one here and one here so this is this case or x is zero and y is one so y not is zero so if you do this you will get one here so another case is one zero so let's try this so if x is one x not is zero and y is zero zero or x is one y is zero y not is one so this is one and finally both of them are 1 1 so in this case x naught is 0 and y is 1 or 1 and 0 so this is 0 so from this function we have put all possibilities and we find this f is exactly the same as the original f function so what this boolean expression is the same as this function so let's do another example so i am giving you this truth table so in this case i have three ones so i need to examine these three condition right so i am asking you to find out the boolean function for this truth table so all we need to focus these three lines so the first line is this is the case when x is zero and y is one so this is x and y not and this is x and y right so i can write my function f as x not y or x y not or x and y so if this condition is true or this condition is true or this is true my output is one but now i can simplify my expression right so if i take these two terms in x parentheses that i will have y not or y and this is one so what will i have x not y or x right now i can distribute this or operator on these two so i can write this is x not or x and y or x so this is one so what we are left with is x or y so basically this is the or operator or function right f is equal to x or y so let's do one more example so in this example again i have two inputs and my output is all ones right so in this case i need to take care all these conditions right so this is x naught and y naught so this is x naught and y this is x y naught and this is x and y so we can write in a long way the boolean expression for f and if you do boolean operation you will see your output will be one right why is that because in this case f does not depend on x or y right in any case or in all cases f is one then this is a function f equal to one function similarly if i had some function x y and if it is always zero then you can directly say this is f is equal to zero function it does not depend on the inputs okay let's do one final example for this truth table to boolean function representation so in this case let's assume i have three inputs so these are my eight input combinations and in this example i give my f like this zero 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 one zero 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 one so in only two cases f is one so i need to look at these conditions so this tells me x naught and y and z and this tells me x y and z so i can write f is equal to x naught y z or x and y and z but we can also simplify this right i can take this into yz parentheses right i will have x naught or x so this is 
one so f is equal to yz okay so instead of writing this truth table every time to describe our functions there are other ways of describing our functions and one method is called mean term representation so let's look at this mean term representation of our boolean functions so this is a short way of representing functions so it means it will give us and combinations of terms for example let's assume we have three variables and if all our inputs are zero then our mean term to represent this will be x naught y naught and z naught so instead of writing this x y and z variables i can represent the same thing with mean term zero okay so if my inputs are zero zero one my mean term will be x naught y naught and z and i can represent this with a small letter m and one so this is mean term one so if my inputs are zero one zero so then i have x naught y and z naught and i call this mean term two so if i have zero one one it means x naught y and z and i call this m3 so we could have one zero zero x y naught and z naught then this is called m4 if i have one zero one this is x y naught and z and this is called m5 if i have one one zero i have x y and z naught and this is called m6 if i have one 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 i have x y and z and this is called m6 so these are the mean terms right instead of writing all these variables and ending with the other inputs i can easily represent them using this m0 m1 m2 m3 and etc so if i give you a function for these inputs for example let's say i give you a function g and i say this function is zero here one here zero here zero here one here zero zero one here so instead of writing in a long way right in the long way what i need to write x naught y naught z or x y naught z or x y z so instead of writing like this what i can say g is equal to m1 or m4 or m7 right so this is a shorter way of writing it another way i can also say g is equal to sum of mean terms one four seven so this is a short way of expressing our boolean functions and in the mean term we consider and combinations of terms similarly instead of taking where the function is one i can also consider to write my output or function based on zeros in the function right so up to now i considered these ones but it is also possible to consider zeros and based on the zeros i can write my function and this representation is called max term representation so in this case i consider or combinations of the terms in the mean term we consider and combinations of terms so let's say i have this x y z as my input zero 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 right? and my max term here it will be x or y or z and i will call this max term zero so i now i have capital m i have zero zero one then i will say this is x or y or z naught and i will call this is m1 right what we are trying to do we are taking all combinations of variables which makes it zero okay zero one zero then you will have x or y naught or z and this is called m2 so we can continue writing zero one one so this will be x or y naught or z naught and this is called max term three so if i go to one 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 so i will have x naught y naught z naught and this is called and max term seven so if a function is zero one zero zero 
1. In this case, what is important for us? Where the f is 0. So I can write my f is max term 0. Now I will say and max term 2 and max term 3 and max term 5 and max term 6. Or I can say my f is multiplication of max term 0, 2, 3, 5 and 6. If you also notice a mean term or max term, let's say max term M0, this is the not of the mean term 0. right? Or you can say mean term 0 is the not of max term 0. Or similarly, you can write the same thing for the other mean terms and max terms. So any mean term is the not of the, the term of the max term. So there are also some other common representations. One is called product of sum representation. So in this representation, basically, f will be a product of some of the sum variables. So this is, for example, one case of product of sum representation of a function. We could also represent functions using sum of products representation and i will give just one example here let's say f is equal to y naught or x y or x naught y c naught so this is one representation right and then if you want we can convert this to a mean term right let's try to represent the same function in the mean term representation but for the mean term representation i need to add for example for this i need to add variables x and z and for this one i need to add variable z and this is already a mean term this is 0 1 0 this is mean term 2 right so i already know that so to find this so i will write f is equal to y not so if i add this x or x not and z or z not i will not be changing my function and for the second term i need to add this x y and z or z not and we have m2 here so now from here i can multiply y so i have y not x or x not y not then z or z not or x y z or x y z not and m2 so x y z this is m7 or this is 110 m6 and this is m2 then i can write x y not z so i multiply this term with this z and z not or x y not z not or now let's multiply this x not y not z or x not y not z not now what is this this is m5 and this is m4 and this is 0 m1 and this is m0 now if i try to write this so we have mean term 0 mean term 1 and mean term 2, mean term 4, mean term 5, mean term 6, and mean term 7. 